Good morning, Senator. Well, good morning, Leroy. How are you this day? Well, you're asking on the right day. It's been a horrible <laughs> week, but it's great now. The hard stuff's behind us, and and I mean things are really about to happen, as you, you probably know. Yes, I do, and uh, would you kind of fill us in on that? That's what we're here for today, well, we want everybody to know. Yeah, well, first of all, I just want to make sure everyone is aware that it could happen while we're talking. It could be two days from now, but there will be action. This president is not going to allow uh, uh, Syria to get by with what they have done. You might remember two other times, one during the Obama administration, and he said he's going to put, he's drawn a line on chemical weapons in Syria. Syria crossed that line, and we did nothing about it. But then this president came along, and it was about a year ago, and uh, and he he just didn't tolerate it. He, he uh, sent the bombs over. We blew up the area that they're using, the resources they're using for their chemical weapons. And that worked for about a year, but he did it again. Syria did it again. We have now identified that they def- he was definitely, Assad was behind it, and they have um, uh, done all the damage with uh, chemical weapons. <clears throat> this is what's interesting now, uh, Leroy. We have Great Britain on our side. We have France on our side. All of them are saying, yes, we need to take action, uh, hard military action against Syria as a result of this. And we need to be uh, doing it in concert with each other. So get ready. It could be happening now. It's the right thing to do. It's the necessary thing to do. And we now have a president who doesn't tolerate the – he's not the mushy president that uh, we were used to for for eight years where they'd make accusations, they'd make uh, charges, and then not do anything. So you might get ready. This is about uh, to happen. Uh, The other thing I was – I don't think I talked to you since I was in the – in the South China Sea, no, yeah, and, and that's that's when I first visibly realized how strong China is. You know these islands because everyone's been talking about this. He, they've actually created islands. It's totally illegal. They don't they don't have legal access to that land, but they're doing it. And they're now over three thousand acres, and they're all as if they're preparing for World War Three. It's all military, all bomb shelters, all runways, all cannons. And they have our allies uh, in the South China Sea intimidated to the point where they aren't real sure whether uh, whose side they would be on when it's United States and uh, and China, because visibly it doesn't look as if we're doing anything yet. But the, all they see is the power that's being built up uh, by China. So that's one of the new things that's out there that's a, a, a great concern. Then the other thing I, I just came back from. Uh, uh, the border again. I've spent quite a bit of time there. Uh, uh, Leroy, I've talked to you about this. I used to be a builder and developer down in that area, so I know the territory. And uh, I went down again a couple of weeks ago. And what had happened was during the Obama administration, Obama had actually invited illegals to come across the border. And he had a system set up where the Border Patrol, uh, under his orders, would take these people, put them in these centers where they would feed them and give them, you know, uh, the health the needs that they had, and then they just disappear. They'd be integrated into our into our country, and uh, so we're setting up something now to stop that from happening. And the border patrol people that I talked to and that I work with down there are very much on our side. They didn't like the idea that they were the ones that went to all the work and all the threats and all the danger of apprehending these people, and then they, they were turned loose. That's a major change nobody knows about, but it's uh, it's going on right now. My goodness. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. No, nobody, no, nobody is. Of course, when I went down, I didn't want to say anything until we got back. Uh, but now we are passing legislation that will preclude them from doing that. As, as an example, the, the system that was set up before and that we're changing now would allow uh, someone to come in, and then they uh, they would just say, all right, we're going to set a court date to see whether or not we should allow you to come in, and it's going to be, uh, you know, a week from Monday. And, of course, obviously, they just didn't show up. They just left. And so we're setting something up now where they can uh, no longer do that. The, the border is a serious thing, and this people, uh, they joke around about the bridge uh, or about the the wall, and mm-hmm. but we have to have 
I mean, look at look at Israel. Look at other countries. Uh, we have a border, and it should be a, a, a binding border, and I think we will have. The other big thing that is uh, happening right now is we we had a a lot of, um, and we talked before about the uh, the uh, uh, the overregulation. And I would suggest that your listeners, if they really want to see the regulations and the changes that we're making right now, getting rid of some of the regulations. Uh, go to my website, inhoff.senate.gov, and you can pull up a, 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 a list. It list is now up to 70 regulations, regulations that came in under Obama, and, uh, and uh, we are, are changing. Right now, the bankers in Oklahoma uh, are here in Washington, the community bankers, and they're celebrating because we have passed legislation now to do away with Dodd-Frank. I know that a lot of people are not familiar with that uh, title, but that was the law that went in that uh, that forced our community banks to be under the same regulation as giant banks. And so uh, that really had a harmful effect on them. And we've now passed the bill out of the Senate, and it'll pass the House, and will be signed by the president that would do away with Dodd-Frank. So some good things are happening up there, um, up here, Leroy. Those things you don't hear about, right? Except when the fellows like you, our great senator, <laughs> informs us. Well, it's nice of you to say, but it's uh, you know this this is a a time that is really uh, where serious things are happening. You're probably aware that uh, during the time that uh, Senator John McCain uh, tragically he has cancer and he's rec- uh, in back in Arizona recovering, and I've been the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee in his absence. So we're doing some things uh, quite a bit. We're very, very active on that uh, committee. Uh, several of us right now have sent a letter to the president, and that we didn't have to send the letter to him other than to let him know that he has the force of Congress behind him to send help, and specifically uh, um, uh, F-35s to Taiwan. You know, it's been so many years now, almost 40 years, that we've, since we've had that Taiwan Act. We don't recognize them as a country. We should, uh, but we can certainly be of help to them because they're, this is the most threatened uh, world that uh, you know I've ever seen uh, during the time that I've been here. And I have to say this about our president, uh, Trump. When Kim Jong-un, last November the 28th, demonstrated that he could send a rocket all the way to uh, all the way to um, Poto, Oklahoma, uh, and and he had the range to do it. He made the statement. He said, now I can press a button. I can uh, take out an American city. The response that our president had at that time was not the mushy response that, uh, that people became used to. He said, yeah, but we've got a button too. Ours works, yours doesn't. You try that and we'll blow you off the face of this earth. Mm-hmm. Now, he was talking his language. Larry, I really right. mean it. I, I was there at the time. I was in North Korea when this happened. And when he, sa- he made this uh, the statement, uh, immediately, within an hour, you had Kim Jong-un calling South Korea, saying, we've changed our mind. We're going to send uh, athletes to your uh, Winter Olympics. And he said, uh, by the way, we need to sit down and negotiate and talk. And now they're in the process. That meeting's already set up. And he also has notified our president that he wants to sit down. It's fine. He'll be willing to come to the White House. I mean, all this is happening because of a very strong, uh, sure, sometimes obnoxious, but, <laughs> but a strong uh, president that we have. And in, in we'd kind of lost the image of being the leader of the free world. We're getting it back real fast right now, Leroy. Well, I can tell you one thing. I appreciate uh, our president, Donald Trump. Well, you you really have to. I, uh, yeah, I cringe when he uh, some of the things his tweets he comes out with. But you know, with with the media hating him to the level of, the, of their hatred, he knows he can't get anything across to the American people. So right. he devised this system of doing it with tweet, and it works. I it mean, does. you know, I heard three tweets this morning from the president, as you could have, or any of our listeners could have. And so it's his way of communicating, since he knows he won't get fair treatment from the press. Uh, frankly, I think it's ingenious. I do, too. I, I agree with it. Sometimes, like you say, you kind of kind of draw up in the knot when you hear it. But... Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. Well, it wouldn't hurt to have somebody in there that he'd uh, bounce this off of before he got, <laughs> got to the world. <laughs> 
But well, but anyway, well, when you stop and think about the threat that we're faced out there, the fact that, is, uh, that North Korea is not the only country that is advanced to the point where they could be a direct threat to a city in America. Because really what you – know, we have other countries over there that hate us just as much. Iran is still a huge threat. Uh, China is the biggest threat in terms of power because we were over there and you've been watching the islands that they have built uh, in the in the South sure. China Sea. And these are all islands. We're talking about over 3,000 acres of them now. Uh, it's all as if he's preparing for World War III. They're all cannons, uh, equipment, runways. Uh, uh, and, and so... You know, it, it's it's a frightening thing. Then, of course, you know what uh, the, the other one is is uh, is Russia. Now, the difference between Russia and China is that Russia doesn't have the money to sustain any type of strength. And as you know, even while we're talking right now, we may be sending the uh, the bomb over somewhere in Syria to stop them, since they are now right. using chemical weapons again. Big difference right now, Leroy, is that we're not doing it alone. Uh, we have Great Britain now with us as of yesterday. We have France. All of them saying, and that's the reason, I guess, the president didn't immediately do something like he did a year ago because he thought this time he needs to get the free world behind him, and he's got it right now. So he's, uh, expect that momentarily. Okay. Well, it's time. Yep. You're right, Leroy. It's got to be done. It sure has. All right, my friend. Well, right. I look forward to getting back. By the way, okay. you know, you've got some, a lot of coal interest down there. Last time I was in Poto, we spent some time looking at the coal operations north of town there. And uh, coal is back in business now again. You know, yes, it, at that, it wasn't long ago that they were putting coal out of business throughout America. It's now thriving, and we're back generating energy again and improving the economy at the same time. You bet. Okay, well, I appreciate it so much, Senator Inhofe. Well, I look forward to next time, Leroy, okay? You bet. So do I. Thank you. Thank you.